his son, he was the Buddha, the Blessed One, the Holy One, Lord of Truth, and Teacher of Mankind. Suddhodana the King, considering the religious dignity of Hisan, descended from his chariot and after saluting his son said, It is now seven years since I have seen thee. How I have lunged thee for this moment! Then the Sakyamuna took a seat opposite his father, and the king gazed eagerly at his son. He longed to call him by his name, Buthe dared not. Siddhartha, he exclaimed silently in his heart, Siddhartha, come back to thine aged father and be his son again. But seeing the determination of his son, he suppressed his sentiments, and desolation overcame him. Thus the king sat face to face with his son, rejoicing in his sadness and sad in his rejoicing. Well might he be proud of Hisan, but his pride broke down at the idea that his great son would never be his heir. I would offer thee my kingdom, said the king, but if I did, thou wouldst account it but as ashes. And the Buddha said, I know that the king's heart is full of love and that for his son's sake he feels deep grief. But let thetis of love that bind him to the son whom he lost embrace with equal kindness all his fellow beings, and he will receive in his place a greater one than Siddhartha, he will receive the Buddha, the teacher of truth, the preacher of righteousness, and Thepias of Nirvana will enter into his heart. Suddhodana trembled with joy when he heard the melodious words of his son, the Buddha, and clasping his hands, exclaimed with tears in his eyes, Wonderful is this change! The overwhelming sorrow has passed away. At first my sorrowing heart was heavy, but now I reap the fruit of thy great renunciation. It was right that, moved by thy mighty sympathy, thou shouldst reject the pleasures of royal power and achieve thy noble purpose in religious devotion. Now that thou hast found the path, thou canst preach the law of immortality to all the world that yearns for deliverance. The king returned to the palace, while the Buddha remained in Thegrove before the city. 28 Yasodhara On the next morning the Buddha took his bowl and set out to beg his food. And the news spread abroad, Prince Siddhartha is going from house to house to receive alms in the city where he used to ride a in a chariot attended by bis retinue. His robe is like a red clod, and he holds in his hand an earthen bowl. On hearing the strange rumor, the king went forth in great haste and when he met his son he exclaimed, Why dost thou thus disgrace me? Knowest thou not that I can easily supply the Anthebhikas with food? And the Buddha replied, It is the custom of my race. But the king said, How can this be? Thou art descended from kings, and not one of them ever begged for food. O great king, rejoined the Buddha, Thou and thy race may claim descent from kings, my descent is from the Buddhas of old. They, begging their food, lived on alms. The king made no reply, and the Blessed One continued, It is customary, O king, when one has found a hidden treasure, for him to make an offering of the most precious jewel to his father suffer me, therefore, to open this treasure of mine which is the Dharma, and accept from me this gem, and the Blessed One recited the following stanza, Rise from dreams and loiter not open to truth thy mind. Practice righteousness and thou eternal bliss shalt find. Then the king conducted the prince into the palace, and the ministers and all the members of the royal family greeted him with great reverence, but Yasad Harat, the mother of Rahul, did not make her appearance. The king sent for Yasad Harat, but she replied, Surely, if I am deserving of any regard, Siddhartha'll come and see me. The Blessed One, having greeted all his relatives and friends, asked, Where is Yasad Harat? 
and on being informed that she had refused to come, he rose straightway and went to her apartments. I am free, the Blessed One said to his disciples, Sariput and Magalna, whom he had bidden to accompany him to the princess chamber, the princess, however, is not as yet free. Not having seen me for a long time, she is exceedingly sorrowful. Unless her grief be allowed its course her heart will cleave. Should she touch the Tathagat, the Holy One, ye must not prevent her. Yasadhara sat in her room, dressed in mean garments, and her hair cut. When Prince Siddhartha entered, she was, from the abundancy of her affection, like an overflowing vessel, unable to contain her love. Forgetting that the man whom she loved was the Buddha, the Lord of the world, the preacher of truth, she held him by his feet and wept bitterly. Remembering, however, that Suddhodana was present, she felt ashamed, and rising, seated herself reverently at a little distance. The king apologized for the princess, saying, this arises from her deep affection, and is more than a temporary emotion. During the seven years that she has lost her husband, when she heard that Siddhartha had shaved his head, she did likewise, when she heard that he had left off the use of perfumes and ornaments, she also refused their use. Like her husband she had eaten at appointed times from an earthen bowl only. Like him she had renounced high beds with splendid coverings, and when other princes asked her in marriage, she replied that she was stillies. Therefore, grant her forgiveness. And the Blessed One spoke kindly to Yasad Hara, telling of her great merits inherited from former lives. She had indeed been again and again of great assistance to him. Her purity, her gentleness, her devotion had been invaluable to the Bodhisattva and he aspired to attain enlightenment, the highest aim of mankind. And so holy had she been that she desired to become Thuif of a Buddha. This, then, is her karma, and it is the result of great merits. Her grief has been unspeakable, but the consciousness of the glory that surrounds her spiritual inheritance increased by her noble attitude during her life, will be a bomb that will miraculously transform all sorrows into heavenly joy. 29 Rahul Many people in Kapalavatthu believed in the Tathagat and took refuge in his doctrine, among them Nanda, Siddhartha Shalf brother, the son of Prajapati, Devadatta, his cousin and brother-in-law, Upli the barber, and Anurita the philosopher some years later Ananda, another cousin of the Blessed One, also joined the Sangha. Ananda was a man after the heart of the Blessed One, he was his most beloved disciple, profound in comprehension and gentle in spirit. And Ananda remained always near the Blessed Master of Truth, until death parted them. On the seventh day after the Buddha's arrival in Kapalavatthu, Yasadhara dressed Rahul, now seven years old, in all the splendor of a prince and said to him, This holy man, whose appearance is so glorious that he looks like the great Brahma, is thy father. He possesses four great mines of wealth which I have not yet seen. Go to him and entreat him to put thee in possession of them for the son ought to inherit the property of his father. Rahul replied, I know of no father but the king. Who is my father? The princess took the boy in her arms and from the window she pointed out to him the Buddha, who happened to be near Thepalas, partaking of food. Rahul then went to the Buddha, and looking up into his face said without fear and with much affection, My father. And standing near by him, he added, O Samama, even thy shadow is a place of bliss. When the Tathagat had finished his repast, he gave blessings and went away from the palace, 
but Rahul followed and asked his father for his inheritance. No one prevented the boy, nor did the Blessed One himself. Then the Blessed One turned to Sariput, saying, My son asks for his inheritance. I cannot give him perishable treasures that will bring cares and sorrows, but I can give him the inheritance of a holy life, which is a treasure that will not perish. Addressing Rahul with earnestness, the Blessed One said, Gold and silver and jewels are not in my possession. But if thou art willing to receive spiritual treasures, and art strong enough to carry them and to keep them, I shall give thee the four truths which will teach thee the eightfold path of righteousness. Dost thou desire to be admitted to the brotherhood of those who devote their life to the culture of the heart seeking for the highest bliss attainable? And Rahul replied with firmness, I do. I want to join the brotherhood of the Buddha. When the king heard that Rahul had joined the brotherhood of Bhikkhus he was grieved. He had lost Siddhatthi and Nanda, Hissans, and Devadatta, his nephew. But now that his grandson had been taken from him, he went to the Blessed One and spoke to him and the Blessed One promised that from that time forward he would not ordain any minor without the consent of his parents or guardians. Consolidation of the Buddha's Religion 30 Jayvaka, the physician long before the Blessed One had attained enlightenment, self-mortification had been the custom among those who earnestly sought for salvation. Deliverance of the soul from all the necessities of life and finally from the body itself, they regarded as the aim of religion. Thus, they avoided everything that might be a luxury in food, shelter, and clothing, and lived like the beasts in the woods. Some went naked, while others wore the rags cast away upon cemeteries or dung heaps. When the Blessed One retired from the world, he recognized at once the error of the naked ascetics, and, considering the indecency of their habit, clad himself in cast-off rags. Having attained enlightenment and rejected all unnecessary self-mortifications, the Blessed One and his pick has continued e for a long time to wear the cast-off rags of cemeteries and dung heaps. Then it happened that the pick has were visited with diseases of all kinds, and the Blessed One permitted an explicitly ordered use of medicines, and among them he even enjoined, wean verned, the use of unguents. One of the brethren suffered from a sore on his foot, and the Blessed One enjoined the Bhikkhus to wear foot coverings. Now it happened that a disease befell the body of the Blessed One a himself, and Ananda went to Jayvaka, physician to Bimbisra, thinking. And Jayvaka, a faithful believer in the Holy One, ministered unto the Blessed One with medicines and baths until the body of the Blessed One was completely restored. At that time, Pajoda, king of Ajayan, was suffering from jaundice, and Jayvaka, the physician to King Bimbisra, was consulted. When King Pajoda had been restored to health, he sent to Jayvaka a suit of the most excellent cloth. And Jayvaka said to himself, This suit is made of the best cloth, and nobody is worthy to receive it but the Blessed One, the perfect and holy Buddha, or the Magadha king, Sanija Bimbisra. Then Jayvaka took that suit and went to the place where the Blessed One was, having approached him, and having respectfully saluted the Blessed One, he sat down near him and said, Lord, ye have a boon to ask of the Blessed One. The Buddha replied, The Tathagats, Jayvaka, do not grant boons before they know what they are. Jayvaka said, Lord, it is a proper and unobjectionable request. Speak, Jayvaka, said the Blessed One. Lord of the world, the Blessed One wears only robes made of rags taken from a dung heap or a cemetery, and so also does the Brotherhood of Bhikkhus. Now, Lord, 
This suit has been sent to me by King Pajoda, which is the best and most excellent, and the finest and the most precious, and the noblest that can be found Lord of the world. May the Blessed One accept from me this suit, and may he allow the Brotherhood of Bhikkhus to wear lay robes. The Blessed One accepted the suit, and after having delivered Erlogis discourse, he addressed the Bhikkhus thus, Henceforth ye shall be at liberty to wear either cast-off rags or lay robes. Whether ye are pleased with the one or with the other, I will approve of it. When the people at Rajagaha heard, the Blessed One has allowed Bhikkhus to wear lay robes, those who were willing to bestow gifts became glad. And in one day many thousands of robes were presented at Rajagaha to the Bhikkhus. 31 The Buddha's parents attained Nirvana when Suddhodana had grown old. He fell sick and sent for his son to come and see him once more before he died, and the Blessed One came and stayed at the sick bed, and Suddhodana, having attained perfect enlightenment, died in the arms of the Blessed One. And it is said that the Blessed One, for the sake of preaching to his mother M.Y. Dev, ascended to heaven and dwelt with the Devas. Having concluded his pious mission, he returned to the earth and went about again, converting those who listened to his teachings. Thirty-two women admitted to the Sangha Yasadhara had three times requested of the Buddha that she might be admitted to the Sangha, but her wish had not been granted. Now Prajapati, the foster mother of the Blessed One, in the company of Yasadhara, and many other women, went to the Tathagat entreating him earnestly to let them take the vows and be ordained as disciples. And the Blessed One, foreseeing the danger that lurked in admitting women to the Sangha, protested that while the good religion ought surely to last a thousand years it would, when women joined it, likely decay after five hundred years, but observing the zeal of Prajapati and Yasadhara for leading religious life he could no longer resist and assented to have them admitted as his disciples. Then the Venerable Ananda addressed the Blessed One thus, Are women competent? Venerable Lord, if they retire from household life to the homeless state, under the doctrine and discipline announced by the Tathagat, to attain to the fruit of conversion, to attain to a release from a wearisome repetition of rebirths, to attain to saintship. And the Blessed One declared, Women are competent, Ananda, if they retire from household life to the homeless state, under the doctrine and discipline announced by the Tathagat, to attain to the fruit of conversion, to attain to a release from a wearisome repetition of rebirths, to attain to saintship. Consider, Ananda, how great a benefactress Prajapati has been she is the sister of the mother of the Blessed One, and as foster mother and nurse, reared the Blessed One after the death of his mother. So, Ananda, women may retire from household life to the homeless state, under the doctrine and discipline announced by the Tathagat. Prajapati was the first woman to become a disciple of the Buddhaan to receive the ordination as a bhikkhuni. 33 The Bhikkhus conduct toward women The Bhikkhus came to the Blessed One and asked him, O Tathagat, our Lord and Master, what conduct toward women dost thou prescribe to the Samamas who have left the world? And the Blessed One said, Guard against looking on a woman. If ye see a woman, let it be as though ye saw her not, and have a no conversation with her. If, after all, ye must speak with her, let it be with a pure heart, and think to yourself, I as a Samama will live in this sinful world as the spotless leaf of the lotus, unsoiled by the mud in which it grows. If the woman be old, regard her as your mother, if young, Asia's sister, if very young, as your child. The Samama who looks on a woman as a woman, or touches her as a woman, has broken his vow and is no longer a disciple of the Tathagat. The power of lust is great with men, and is to be feared with all, 
take then the bow of earnest perseverance, and the sharp arrow points of wisdom. Cover your heads with the helmet of right thought, and fight with fixed resolve against the five desires. Lust beclouds a man's heart, when it is confused with woman's beauty, and the mind is dazed. Better far with red-hot irons bore out both your eyes, than encourage in yourself sensual thoughts, or look upon a woman's form with lustful desires. Better fall into the fierce tiger's mouth, or under the sharp knife of the executioner, than dwell with a woman and excite in yourself lustful thoughts. A woman of the world is anxious to exhibit her form and shape, whether walking, standing, sitting, or sleeping. Even when represented as a picture, she desires to captivate with the germs of her beauty, and thus to rob men of their steadfast heart. How then ought ye to guard yourselves? By regarding her tears and her smiles as enemies, her stooping form, her hanging arms, and her disentangled hair as toils designed to entrap man's heart. Therefore, I say, restrain the heart, give it no unbridled license. 34 Vishakha Vishakha, a wealthy woman in Savatha who had many children and grandchildren, had given to the order the pub Brahma or Eastern Garden, and was the first in northern Kosala to become a matron of the lay sisters. When the Blessed One stayed at Savathi, Vishakha went up to the place where the Blessed One was, and tendered him an invitation to take his meal at her house, which the Blessed One accepted. And a heavy rain fell during the night and the next morning, and Thpikha doffed their robes to keep them dry and let the rain fall upon their bodies. When on the next day the Blessed One had finished his meal, she took her seat at his side and spoke thus, Eight are the boons, Lord, which I beg of the Blessed One. Said the Blessed One, the Tathagats, O Vishakha, grant no boons until they know what they are. Vishakha replied, Befitting, Lord, and unobjectionable are the boons I ask. Having received permission to make known her requests, Vishaka said, I desire, Lord, through all my life long to bestow robes for the rainy season on the Sangha, and food for incoming bhikkhus, and food for outgoing bhikkhus, and food for the sick, and food for those who wait upon the sick, and medicine for the sick, and a constant supply of rice milk for the Sangha and bathing robes for the Bhikkhunas, the sisters. Said the Buddha, But what circumstance is it, O Vishakat, that thou hast in view in asking these eight boons of the Tathagat? And Vishakha replied, I gave command, Lord, to my maidservant, saying, Go, and announce to the brotherhood that the meal is ready. And the maid went, but when she came to the Vihar, she observed that Thebhikas had doffed their robes while it was raining, and she thought, these are not Bhikkhus, but naked ascetics letting Thurin fall on them. So she returned to me and reported accordingly, and I had to send her a second time. Impure, Lord, is nakedness, and revolting. It was this circumstance, Lord, that I had in view in desiring to provide the Sangha my life long with special garments for use in the rainy season. As to my second wish, Lord, an incoming Bhikkhu, not being able to take the direct roads, and not knowing the places where food can be procured, comes on his way tired out by seeking for alms it was this circumstance, Lord that I had in view in desiring to provide the Sangha my life long with food for incoming bhikkhus. Thirdly, Lord, an outgoing bhikkhu, while seeking about for alms, may be left behind, or may arrive too late at the place whither he desires to go, and will set out on the road in weariness. Fourthly, Lord, if a sick bhikkhu does not obtain suitable food, 
his sickness may increase upon him, and he may die. Fifthly, Lord, a bhikkhu who is waiting upon the sick will lose his opportunity of going out to seek food for himself. Sixthly, Lord, if a sick bhikkhu does not obtain suitable medicines, his sickness may increase upon him, and he may die. Seventhly, Lord, I have heard that the Blessed One has praised rice milk, because it gives readiness of mind, dispels hunger and thirst, it is wholesome for the healthy as nourishment, and for the sick as a medicine. Therefore I desire to provide the Sanghami life long with a constant supply of rice milk. Finally, Lord, the Bhikkhunis are in the habit of bathing in the Ivarakai Ravit with the courtesans, at the same landing place, and naked. And the courtesans, Lord, ridicule the Bhikkhunis, saying, What is the good, ladies, of your maintaining chastity when you are young? When you are old, maintain chastity then, thus will you obtain both worldly pleasure and religious consolation. Impure, Lord, is nakedness for a woman, disgusting, and revolting. These are the circumstances, Lord, that I had in view. The Blessed One said, But what was the advantage you had in view for yourself, O Vishakat? in asking the eight boons of Thetathgatha. Vishaka replied, Pikas who have spent the rainy seasons in various places will come, Lord, to Savatha to visit the Blessed One. And on coming to the Blessed One they will ask, saying, Such and such Abhikhu, Lord, has died. What, now, is his destiny? Then will the Blessed One explain that he has attained the fruits of conversion, that he has attained a Rahaship or has entered Nirvana, as the case may be. And I, going up to them, will ask, Was that brother, sirs, own of those who had formerly been at Savathi? If they reply to me, He has formerly been at Savathi, then shall I arrive at the conclusion, for a certainty did that brother enjoy either the obese for the rainy season, or the food for the incoming bhikkhus, or the food for the outgoing bhikkhus, or the food for the sick, or the food for those that wait upon the sick, or the medicine for the sick, or the constant supply of rice milk. Then will gladness spring up within me, thus gladdened, joy will come to me and so rejoicing all my mind will be at peace. Being thus at peace I shall experience a blissful feeling of content, and in that bliss my heart will be at rest. That will be to me an exercise of my moral sense, an exercise of my moral powers, an exercise of the seven kinds of wisdom. This, Lord, was the advantage I had in view for myself in asking those eight boons oft blessed one. The blessed one said, It is well, it is well, Vishakat. Thou hast done well in asking these eight boons of the Tathagat with such advantages in view. Charity bestowed upon those who are worthy of fit is like good seed sown on a good soil that yields an abundancy of fruits. But alms given to those who are yet under the tyrannical yoke of the passions are like seed deposited in a bad soil. The passions of the receiver of the alms choke, as it were, the growth of merits. And the Blessed One gave thanks to Vishakha in these verses, O noble woman of an upright life, disciple of the Blessed One, thou givest unstintedly in purity of heart. Thou spreadest joy assuagest pain, and verily thy gift will be a blessing as well to many others as to thee.